PARP inhibitors are a new class of drugs that we're using to treat patients with cancer. So PARP stands for poly-ADP ribose polymerase. These are enzymes involved in the repair of DNA damage. So cancer cells um, are constantly having their DNA damaged and they have mechanisms to repair that damage. So PARP inhibitors act to block that repair mechanism, thereby the cancer cell can't survive and will die. So we're now using PARP inhibitors, including Rucaparib, specifically as treatments for women with a particular type of ovarian cancer called high-grade serous. We think they're a really major advance, especially when you give them after chemotherapy as what we call maintenance treatment. And the results of the trials both here and previously show that adding in a PARP inhibitor as maintenance treatment after the end of chemotherapy in women with relapsed ovarian cancer, cancer can dramatically improve the, their progression-free survival, the time it takes for the cancer to start growing again and for the women to start needing more chemotherapy. Realistically, this is a game changer in the treatment of ovarian cancer. The results we're seeing are unlike anything we've ever seen before in ovarian cancer and provides a really important advance for the treatment of our patients. At the moment, all the trials of PARP inhibitors that we have seen the results of are in relapsed disease. And PARP inhibitors appear to have activity both given on their own as monotherapy, but also given as maintenance following chemotherapy. There's a big debate about what's going to be the best strategy, and indeed PARP inhibitors will probably play a role both as maintenance therapy after chemotherapy, but also as monotherapy. So that's why they're really exciting. We'll be able to use them in different contexts in different patients. So the Aerial 3 study recruited women with relapsed ovarian cancer who'd then been treated with platinum chemotherapy for their relapsed disease and had responded. And in the trial, women were randomized either to receive Rucaparib as maintenance treatment or a placebo. Um, it, Aerial 3 was a really interesting design because it was, it, we looked at three groups of patients. Firstly, we looked at those women who had mutations in BRCA1 and 2, and there was a very significant improvement in progression-free survival. We then widened the analysis to include those patients with BRCA mutations and also other patients who had defective homologous recombination for other mechanisms. And again, the results showed that Rucaparib very significantly improved progression-free survival. And then finally, we widened the analysis to include all the patients included in the trial. And that's where it was most interesting because we thought that the greatest benefit for the PARP inhibitor would be only in those women with BRCA mutations or defective homologous recombination. But in fact, in the entire intention to treat analysis, the whole study population showed really significant improvement in progression-free survival. So that means that PARP inhibitors, like Rucaparib, will ha could have activity in all women with relapsed high-grade ovarian cancer who have responded to chemotherapy in the relapse setting. So Aerial 3 is now the third trial of maintenance PARP inhibitor in relapsed ovarian cancer. It's very difficult to make comparisons across trials with different drugs and slightly different inclusion criteria in the studies, but broadly all three studies have shown that if you respond to platinum in the relapse setting, a maintenance PARP inhibitor dramatically improves your progression-free survival. Now, PARP inhibitors are drugs that do have side effects. It's very difficult to have anti-cancer activity without any side effects, but by and large, the side effects are tolerable. Uh, the Rucaparib, the main side effects of Rucaparib were fatigue, nausea, and anemia, but all of those were manageable either with dose reductions or short dose delays. One of the things we learned in the study was how to manage those side effects. And those of us who've been using PARP inhibitors for a while now, you become very confident knowing how to treat patients, what advice to give to patients, and how to manage the side effects over time. Although some women in the study did have to reduce the dose of their drug, very few had to discontinue, and most women were able to continue on study drug right the way through. So the efficacy is good, the manageability and the toxicity of these drugs is, is low, not zero, but low, and we believe that we will be able to find regimes that women can tolerate so they can take these drugs without interruption. I think that's a really easy question to answer, yes. 
So uh, routine availability of these drugs for women outside of clinical trials will be a game changer for women with ovarian cancer. There is no doubt about that in my mind. Uh, and now clearly there are regulatory processes that have to be gone through uh, and different countries will have to decide how they're going to provide these drugs. But broadly speaking, if these drugs are routinely available to women with ovarian cancer, it will dramatically change the way we treat the patients and their outcomes. So Ariel 4 is different from Ariel 3. So Ariel 3 was a maintenance study following chemotherapy. Ariel 4, we're putting the PARP inhibitor head to head against chemotherapy in women with relapsed BRCA mutated tumors. So we know that rucaparib has activity on its own. It has activity as a maintenance against placebo. We've never actually done a direct head to head comparison. So Ariel 4 is the first time we've, uh, that rucaparib has been compared to standard chemotherapy. So in a way we're asking, is it acceptable or effective just to take a tablet every day rather than having intravenous chemotherapy with all the side effects that we know chemotherapy can have? So Ariel 4 is going to answer a different question, but an equally important question is that can we use IMPARP inhibitors instead of chemotherapy in women with relapsed BRCA mutated ovarian cancer? So I've got to be careful, I'm, I'm an ovarian cancer oncologist, so um, that's the only disease I treat. But there are other cancers where we see similar genetic defects as we see in high-grade ovarian cancer. So one obvious disease is triple negative breast cancer, which at a genomic level looks very similar to high-grade ovarian cancer. But I know that PARP inhibitors are now being looked at in other cancers. Prostate cancer has a much higher rate of BRCA1 and 2 mutations than we previously expected. Bladder cancer may have potential. So I think there's, there's a, a widening spectrum of cancers where these drugs may have efficacy. My interest is ovarian cancer, where as I said, I think this is going to be a game changer, but I believe that the effects will be able to spread out into other cancers over time.